Isaiah chapter number 19, Psalms being the book, being the 19th book of the Bible. The burden of Egypt. So we've gone from Moab, Damascus, now we're in Egypt. The, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud. Psalms 104, verse 3, Ezekiel 1, 4. He cometh with clouds. Something about clouds and the Lord's coming. And shall come into Egypt. Hmm. It's interesting. He keeps telling the Israelites not to return to Egypt and he'll show up in Egypt. A lot more to read. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved. I got a note here, knocked over, 1 Samuel 5, 1. At his presence. Now, in Egyptian history, there was the valley of the gods where there's this wall of gods. Man had to move that because of flooding, I believe it was. That's not a fulfillment here in the Bible in chapter number 19 because it says they're going to be moved at his, God's presence. So when the Lord comes, Egypt is still going to have their idols. And God is going to do what he did in the Old Testament. Mr. Dagon, you fall down. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Dagon, I told you to fall down before me. I, I did, I did. It. They came and picked me up. Down, boy. You bow down before the heavenly holy God. That's what's going to happen here. Down, idols. You've heard of dumb idols. What about down idols? So what happened with Dagon is going to happen again. Isn't that great? Isn't how the Bible just repeats itself? Because man don't learn history. America wanted to get right. America wanted to get into revival. The church better get back in the Bible. Not the people of America. They're unsaved people. <coughs> They don't care what the Bible, they don't care what God has to say. But as church and Christians, you ought to. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. It's going to make their heart turn to the Lord. Now here's a civil war. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Civil war. And they shall fight everyone against his brother. Everyone against his neighbor. City against city and kingdom against kingdom. You think the American Civil War was something special? Israel, north and south, has been fighting each other. And now God says that in the future there's going to be a civil war with the Egyptians. The spirit of Egypt, chapter 8, verse 19, shall fail in the midst of the, thereof. And I, God will destroy the counsel thereof and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers all right and to them that have familiar spirits all right and to harry uh, no i mean wizards well that's what the church is doing today with the with the book and the movies they're going to a wizard. Movie night. Let's have our children, homeschool children, let's have them read the, this series of books. If you don't think anything's wrong with wizards and familiar spirits and charms and all that, who's going after them? Egypt. What did God say about Egypt? Find me one place in the Bible besides this chapter that's coming up. That Egypt is likened to something good. Now in this chapter, Egypt gets right. But it's not right right now. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel lord, the Antichrist. And a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. You think the Egyptians served, had Israel served with rigor? 
and hard bondage, you wait till the Antichrist rules over them. You know why the Antichrist will be fierce with the Egyptians? You have an idea? I'll tell you what I have an idea about, and this is just an idea. Because they didn't kill the Jews. Pharaoh bowed down, you know, the God King, bowed down before Satan and said, Yeah, I'll take I'll take that land, I'll take the authority, I'll take the kingdom, and I'll destroy the Jews. And he failed. You imagine what, uh, uh, what the Antichrist is going to have over Germany? You had a chance to kill those Jews. Why didn't you? Satan will be angry with those that did not do his purpose. And his purpose was to destroy those Jews. And we've done that study all the way from Genesis 1 to chapter 19. Where Satan has tried to destroy those Jews after, after, and after, and after, and after. We've even looked at it in the book of Luke. Fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. God said it, it's going to happen. How's that? What's the bumper sticker? God said it, that settles it. And the waters, the Nile, shall fail from the sea. I'm trying to see a note here. I got a note here of eight inches of rainfall per year. And the river shall be wasted and dried up. James 5 says that there's no rain. Like in Elijah's time. That matches the tribulation. And they shall turn to the rivers far away. And the brooks for defense. Shall be emptied and dried up. The reeds and the flags, that's a plant, shall wither. So where they have their navy and, and their stock, it's gone. It's dried up. The, the, the plant life, the marshes, are withered up. That, that's a long time without rain. Go back with Ahab. When Elijah's walking around, Three James 5 says that's, just, that's three and a half years. Oh, uh, isn't that a magic number? Three and a half is, is a magic number in the Bible. The paper reads, your papyrus. By the brooks, by the mouth of the brooks. And everything sown by the brooks shall wither, be driven away, and be no more. Uh-oh. And that would be uh, uh, a commodity of the Egyptians. Something they would export. Because watch what it goes on to say. The fishers also shall mourn. And all that cast angle into the brooks shall lament. And they shall spread their nets upon the waters with language. No more fish. Do you read what happened to Moses? All the fish died. Guess what's coming back? Egypt. And Exodus is coming back. Moreover, they that work in fine flax, here we go, and they that weave networks, and to go with the reeds, verse 7, the flags and the reeds, verse 6, and they that weave networks, uh, baskets and all that, I would assume, shall be confounded. They have no more work. It almost looks like a big Obama care. Everybody loses their work, but it's God. I wonder who they're going to blame it on. People are out of work in America not because Obama care, because they're turning away from God. They're trying to say that California now is in the biggest drought it's ever had because they didn't know how to be environmentalists. No. They don't know how to worship God, and all the sodomites are coming out of California have started the, the sodomite revolution. I'm surprised God hasn't started dropping things on Washington, D.C. Because that's where all the profanity and all the wickedness and all the sins of the land is. 
Washington, D.C., that's not a state, outruns any city in America for all its crimes. And they're the ones that make the laws for crimes. This is a judgment upon a nation of what? That has idols. What's Washington, D.C.? Let's see. We have a big tower. We have a big man sitting in a seat. We have uh, buildings. We have statues. We have uh, a cemetery, graveyards. We have old buildings. We have all kinds of places. Four presidents sitting in a mountain up in the Dakotas. We could go watch bears and geysers in the Yellowstone. We got big redwood trees in California. You got old colonial houses. You can be in New England. But what, what is that? That's idols. You go watch a green woman get your picture taken from her in New York Harbor. That's idols. You don't worship them. Why do you take a picture of it? Why do you buy the junk? More Christians visit that junk than they do church. So the fish are gone. The the plants are gone. Occupations are gone. And they shall be broken in the purpose thereof. All that make sluices. And that's a stream from a through floodgate. So it's a man made. There are people <coughs> excuse me. Who, who their charge or their finances are made by, they will guide water to, to your place. Ir, ir, irrigation, almost said irritation. Irrigation. Guess what? You can't have a job of irrigation if there's no water. And ponds for fish. You can't make your own pond for the fish disappearing. They're going to dry up. Fish is a staple food in that area. I thank God I don't live there. I don't like fish. W little boy had what? Bread and fish. What did Pete, What did Jesus give Peter to eat on the shore? Fish. Fish is a staple. And you take that away, there's going to be starvation. Surely the princes of Zoan are fools. Okay. So is our government. The council of the wise councils of Pharaoh is brought is become brutish. How say ye unto Pharaoh? Alright, I am the son of a wise man, the son of the ancient king. So what? What are you doing about the economical problems? What are you doing about the problems that God is causing in the land? Absolutely nothing. So what are you wise about? We'll go around making more laws. You can't have you know, this. You can't have that. You can't do that. It ain't going to do you no other if God's angry with you. You've got next year in the public school system in the United States of America going to be worshiping Allah and the Mohammedans with their holidays and their worship. And you think God's going to bless you? This is what Egypt's doing. Egypt today is turned into a Muslim nation. Where are they? Good question. Where are the wise men? Good question. And let them now tell thee now. Let them know what El Nemo of Hose has purpose upon Egypt. Let them know what exhaust of Cadillacs of hosts have purpose Egypt. Let know those Bible believing Christians of hosts have purpose upon Egypt. Let know what too much fishing of fish. You know, the fish are gone because you overfished them. You took too many fish. That's the excuse of America. Listen, those Alaska crab fishermen are being reduced by their by their catch year after year after year, and they're saying you're catching too many crab. No, you're not giving God the the the, the credit. You're not giving God the glory. So God just said, "Hey, you guys down there, stop it. Don't produce any more crabs." Back where where I come from in, in Groton, Connecticut, 
they are finding lobsters with shells that have been deteriorated. And they haven't got the figures idea. Blame the pharmaceutical company that's on the shore. No. You fishermen go out there and your boat breaks down. You damn this. You GD that. You cuss everything. You curse everything. God said, okay, fine. I'll curse it. Instead of thanking God and giving God the blessing. You got one particular church there in Stonington, Connecticut. goes out there. And they're out there throwing water on the boats. I'm surprised the boats don't sink. Tip over. Never come back. With that Baal Mary worship. That's not giving God the credit. That's giving a woman a credit. And then when you watch those go, the, 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 the crab program, a woman gets over the, the microphone over the CBs and all and blesses the fleet. Wait a minute. Does she, doesn't she know what the Bible says in Timothy? A woman should not accept the authority of a man. Lady, shut up. America's in Egypt. They're doing everything that God tells them not to do. And calling it religion and calling it we're right. You're going to start seeing food in America disappear when you have tomato guns and pumpkin canyons and all that other junk. It makes me sick. Some of these programs we watch, listen, they're true programs. And you see them waste food in the name of science. What? We watched last night. They had to have at least 500 waste of bananas. To prove a man could slip on a banana. And God's looking down like that. Oh, uh, angel brought me off? I don't know. Is that what I made a banana for? No, Lord, that's not what I made a banana for. In the name of science. Plausible. In the name of God Almighty. Wasteful. Peter, James, John. Go out there and get the bread. And you know what he did with that? You know what Jesus did when he went and got the bread? He confounded them. We had a couple loaves of bread. Each of us has a basket, and we all got one. Oh, what? Lord, how did this work? How come we got more bread than what you had? The Lord don't waste. The woman, that, that Elijah, Elijah, I forget which one, says, the creditors are coming. He goes, go borrow pots of water and borrow not a few. She said, okay, yep, I did it. We, 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 the oil stopped. He goes, sell that which you have, pay your debt, and live off the rest. If you waste food, God's going to hold you accountable. You know how much America wastes food? There are people that go in dumpsters and survive off the food that's thrown in dumpsters. Where are they? Oh, yeah. And let them know what the Lord of hosts has purposed upon Egypt. The princes of Zoan, this is the government. <coughs> are become fools. The princes of Nof are deceived. They have also seduced Egypt. That's an interesting word. You know, you can apply that word with the, the wizards and the magicians. You know, the magicians in Pharaoh's time of Moses seduced Moses. Sedative. Charmers. You know those those magicians did in Moses' time? Moses and Aaron turned the water to blood. They added to it. They have seduced Egypt. Even they that are to stay reliance upon of the tribes thereof. The Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. Look at that. That's like where it's a, 
Who's gonna Who's gonna go after this man and make him lie? I will, Lord. I will. What are you? I'm a lying and perverse spirit. Go do it. God allows it. King Saul, the evil spirit was of God. Why? Because Saul had rebelled against God after and after and after and after. Why does he send a perverse spirit in Egypt? Because they keep sinning after and after and after. There's a perverse spirit in America. Why? Because we keep sinning and saying it. We're doing it in the name of God. There are churches out there, not only do they have a woman in the pulpit, but they have sodomite women. Now you can read over there, Timothy, if he has the, uh, if he's the husband of one wife. You can now apply that to the sodomites. A woman can say, I'm in the pulpit and I got one wife. And I'm the husband in this, in this household. And don't worry about the children, because now we can adopt them. Except for Florida, but that rule will change pretty soon. There's a perverse spirit in America. Go look in the prisons. See how remorseful they are in prison. Sit in there and complete, oh my God, what did I do? I am so sorry. No, oh, oh, no, they're not. You'll see them in there rapping and happy and playing ball games. You're supposed to feel remorse. Not in this country. They have caused Egypt to err. Or err. I never could get that word right. Err or err. In every work. Every work. Every work. Even the churches, even in schools, even the family, even the doctors, even the guys fixing the street, even the guys picking up your garbage, even your neighbors, mowing the lawns, every work. There are, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. You. This guy is so drunk he doesn't realize that he is forming in his own vomit until he gets sober. That's drunk. I have never been that drunk as far as I know. I don't even know if I've ever been that drunk. <coughs> Neither shall there be any work for Egypt which the head or the tail, branch or rush, may do. Complete unemployment? Or work for God? An absence. We already saw all the fish and all the, the flags and the plants are gone. In that day, there's a particular phase you mark in your Bible. In that day shall Egypt become like a woman. And it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shaketh over it. Ezekiel 38, 19. <coughs> a woman is to be fragile. She's not supposed to be out there using a jackhammer. She's not supposed to be out there welding a welding torch on a 40-foot building uh, skyscraper. She's supposed to be the one where she sees a bug run across the floor and she runs on top of the table and calls for a hubby. Egypt will be like that. Scared. And that land of, by the way, and it announces that God. Now it doesn't say they know it's God. It says because of the Lord. 
You imagine if the Lord's going to make you fear as a nation, what's going to happen? You're going to fear. You may not understand it. You may have a pharmaceutical company that's going to try to help you, but it's of God. Wouldn't it be interesting if God takes away all the blessings of pharmaceutical companies in tribulation? That whatever these pills and medicines come from, they dry up and die? I wonder how many of the pharmaceutical products come from plants that live by water. <coughs> They're going to dry up or be a blood. I wonder how many pharmaceutical companies actually come from Israel when the Antichrist is over there. Oh, by the way, just because, you know, if it doesn't go away, in order to get your pharmaceutical help and your pills and your medicine, one day you're going to have to receive the mark to get your tranquilizer. The land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. That ain't today. Man, the land of Judah today is falling under the PLO and the oil, L-I-L, and the Catholics. Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid of in himself. There's a Jew. Ooh, 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 ooh. Don't mention that. Ooh. Don't say that, people. Get away from me. <coughs> Because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, not environmental, which he, God, has determined against it. Don't blame it on El Nemo and weather. Don't blame it on your exhaust from your cars. God is the author of judgment. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Cana, that is Hebrew. Zephaniah 3, 8, and 9. There won't be no more of those hieroglyphics or whatever they speak today. It's going to be Hebrew. And swear to the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. So with all this judgment that mean, wicked God is promoted upon these people, mean God how come you killed the babies? Four cities get right and turn to God. How's that? But one will be called the city of destruction. In that day, there shall, there shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. Oh, look at that. Do you find that today in Egypt? No. The mean, nasty, wicked God has turned people to him. The lack of employment, the lack of fish, the, the, the lack of products, the lack of making the money, and the fear of like a woman has turned the nation to God. Is there hope in America? There's hope in Egypt. And it shall be for a sign. Now, First Corinthians one twenty-two. Signs are for the Jews. So I put a big question mark there. And for a witness, and the Jews. See, I mean, the, the Jews seek for for a sign, and the Greeks seek after. I forget what it is. Knowledge, I believe it is. I could be wrong. Sign for the Jew and a witness for the Gentile? Unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. So they've gotten right. And all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. People turn against Egypt because they're serving God. And he, God, shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Now, guess who that is? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Egypt will be saved one day. Glory to God. 
except for that one city, the city of destruction. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt. Ezekiel 40 to 48. That's chapter. Colossians 2.14. Isaiah 66.22. And the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day. And shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. That's the millennium. The, the works in the, the Old Testament law is back in the millennium. Maybe even part of the, of the tribulation. There's an altar. And it's making people very angry. I almost said a bad word. <laughs> Maybe they make that altar in the tribulation. They get the Antichrist after. I don't know. But I know it's definitely millennium. And the millennium, Egyptians will get right. How do you like that one? Now, can you imagine Egyptians in the future standing up as a witness at the great white throne judgment to the Egyptians that were back in Exodus? Can you imagine them? Well, here comes Pharaoh up before God. And Egyptians say, had you just done what Moses and Aaron done like we did? You know, Moses and, and Elijah shows up. Maybe they get right in the preaching of Moses. I don't know. Just... I'm trying to put Exodus in together here. You imagine these Egyptians as, as Pharaoh steps up and all the ones, well, who's this God? I don't know who he is, Moses. You imagine a whole bunch of Egy Egyptians walking up saying, Pharaoh, we knew who he was. We knew who the, who the one that Moses preached to you. Why didn't you believe? We did as a nation and we got right with God. You had Moses, and maybe we had Moses? Moses built the altar after they were out of Egypt. Here they're building an altar to God in Egypt. Now, it's probably pretty much all millennium. But all oh, the characters at play, Pharaoh, Moses... The, the, the sea being dried up, the fish dying. Doesn't that sound familiar? Okay. And the Lord, verse 22, shall smite Egypt. Acts 13, 14 through 17. He shall smite, mean, nasty, wicked God, and heal it. Do you know what God said, the Holy Spirit, in Hebrews chapter 12? He says, as a father chasing his son, so I chasing you, so that you are not bastards. Ooh, he said a bad word. Yeah, about the better words say out there, the world. If God is smiting them and heals them, that is correction. That's a father loving his child. And they shall return even to the Lord, that son that left the father and went to the pig pen. Comes back to the father. And the father is happy. And there's celebration. And Ethiopian, I keep saying Ethiopian from last night. Egyptian. You know, nee, 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 nee. They're dressed, and they're in their right mind, serving God. They shall return even to the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. So you know who they're coming to. The Lord Jehovah, Jesus Christ. You can't get a Jehovah Witness to do that. And he, God, shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. He'll wrap his arms around and love them. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Look at that. Is there anything said good about Egypt in the Bible? We're reading it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's... 
Chapter 18 was Job. Chapter 19 is the book of Psalms. 18, there's 42 chapters. There's a man that's three, uh, there's seven days on the ground. He is burdened by Satan with boils. Chapter number 14, uh, excuse me, 19, Psalms. Up comes the blessed man. Psalms about David, a man type of Lord Jesus Christ, the throne of David. According to the chapter alignment, we're in the millennium by the, by the verse. Ezra, they go back to the land. Nehemiah, they rebuild. Esther, a Gentile queen is put down and, Ez and a Jewish queen is set up. Something to it. In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrians shall come into Egypt and, Egypt, and the Egyptians to the Assyria. <coughs> and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be third with Egypt and Assyria, their enemies. Now they're in a reliance of with God even a blessing in the midst of the land whom the Lord of hosts shall bless saying blessed be Egypt my God my God speaking people And Assyria, the work of my God, hands. And Israel, my God, inheritance. Look at that. Israel gets right with God. Egypt gets right with God. And the Assyrians get right with God. And they live happily ever after. As long as they obey the Lord Jesus Christ and the law. And don't get tangled up with Satan when, he, when, he's, when, he's, when, he's, when he's let loose at the end of the thousand years. That's a remarkable chapter we just read. A wicked cursed nation. I will curse them that curse you. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands, at least 6,000 years, 5,000 at least. And God says, finally, you know what? I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to give you an opportunity to turn to my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not under grace. Church is gone. We're in the millennium. Under Grace and works. Faith and works. Faith in the law. And there's an altar being built in Egypt. Israel. Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Molasses tried to build an altar when they went where they weren't supposed to go, and that got everybody all upset. Nobody's getting upset at this altar. And it's quite funny because the Bible says in the millennium, you have to go to Jerusalem. If a nation that does not go to Jerusalem, they're not going to get rain. So it looks like Egyptians get right. Yet in the future. But look what all has to happen in the land. The judgment of God has to fall on the land. Do you really want a revival in America? I'm, I'm talking to you, Christian. I'm talking to you, Pastor. I'm talking to you, Church. Do you really want a revival in America? 
You really want a revival. You really want to pray for it. Maybe God has to bust America down to nothing. I'm talking about jobs and food and resources. That's what may take America to get right. America's too much blessed. She's too much fat. She's too much full. She can afford McDonald's and Burger King for all her meal. I'm surprised when you see rain out there, you don't see little sparks of electricity everywhere because all the electronics people are carrying around and talking and listening to. Now, we went to Walmart today, and just, it just got me. These people, they're talking. I know they're talking on the phone. I know today you can have a phone and you don't have to hold it. You got pieces. But back when I grew up as a child, if you saw somebody in the store talking to themselves, you called the paddy wagon. That person was unfit for society or or parents would grab their children and say, keep away from them. Back, in, back when I grew up. You got people today, they're, they're talking all the place. I work in a grocery store, and, you know, and he's on the phone, honey, is this the eggs you want, or is this the product? And they'll sit there and read the thing and all that, tell me, well, what happened to a piece of paper? A piece of paper is a lot cheaper than the phone. We're too rich as a nation. We're down here at Daytona Beach. Well, we haven't been in a couple to pray for us to get back. But we'll sit there with our signs. And pass out gospel tracts. And we'll see within two hours, four, ten, maybe twenty cars, all they do all night round is just drive in a big circle. Round and round and round. Wasting gas. Why? We're wasting food. We're wasting everything. We're wasting uh, fuel. We're wasting our children. Wasting our money. You truly want a revival. This is why I don't pray for a revival in America. Because God will have to break America. Do you realize with, with Judah. God sent Nebuchadnezzar into the land three times. The third time, I mean, he destroyed it all. And carried it back to Babylon. Alright? Time passes. Daniel, Meshach, and the men to go, and the other guy there. Shadrach. The golden image. The fiery furnace. The den of lions. Michael comes down and visits Daniel. How many years after that does finally Nehemiah, hey, let's get back right with God. Let's go. How many years from the destruction of Jerusalem? To Nehemiah says, hey, let's go back. Or Ezra. And then Nehemiah records, I believe it is, right in the middle of his book, that there's a group of priests that have not gone back. He's like, hey, guys, come here. Why haven't you gone back? Look at all God did to Judah. Look how long it took them to get right and get back. He had to literally destroy his land. This is not God's land. He had to destroy the city that he said, I will put my name there. He had to destroy the temple that, that Solomon built for the honor and glory of the Lord. And, so, and God said, I will put my presence there in that building. He had to destroy all that because of sin. What do you think God will have to do to America for us to get right? Number one, you got to get rid of the presidency. That's not Bible. There were three presidents in the book of Daniel. Two of them were wrong and one of them was right. you got to get a king. The Bible way is a king. No, no American is going to serve a king. you got to kick out the idols. And churches and national parks. They gotta go bye bye. 
You ain't gonna do that. You guys, <coughs> you guys set up laws for the people to serve God. That means no Sunday activities at all, but church. You ain't gonna do that. You know why many people will not go to church on Sunday? I'll tell you why. I got the answer, and I'm guilty of it myself. Because at the church, I'm going to go to their restaurant and buy their products, and they got to be there when I get out of the church. They can't be in church if I'm going to be going there after church. Now, if all of us, and I include myself, if all of us Christians want to get right, why are we doing business on Sundays when we should be home with our family or in church with our church? I'm guilty too. I'll probably stand before the judge, uh, the judgment seat of Christ. Hypocrite. You preach about it and you go on Sundays. We invite people to come to church. We invite people to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we make it so they can't come because you use their establishment. Won't it be funny if this has a nation that is godly, a nation that's under God, and a Bible, a nation that's under the Bible? Yeah, right. I don't believe that. In God we trust. Yeah, right. I don't believe that. That if there was nothing else to do on Sunday, but let's get the family car and go to church, and that's the only place we can go. How about that? The one thing that killed boredom, we'll, we'll go to church. That would start a revival. Because half the people, if they went to the churches that are around today, they would go up to that preacher and say, you're full of crap. What are you teaching? They know the truth. They know how a Christian is supposed to live. They know the principles of the Bible. Half these phony baloney preacherettes and preachers out there in the pulpit, if, if the modern person went there... It has his good sense and has a conscience and all that would prove them wrong. It's only the panty waste and all the other ones that, that fall for the junk. You ain't a Christian nation. In order to be a Christian nation, you gotta be broken. That's what it has to be.